Hello everyone, Space Doyster here, and welcome back to Let's Play Shadow of the Colossus. Last time, we defeated Colossi number 4 and 5, and, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. This time on Shadow of the Colossus, we shall be hunting down Colossus number 6, maybe 7 if our trend continues, but it's probably going to get a lot more difficult from here on out because Colossus number 6 was the very last one I uh, defeated before I stopped playing hard mode altogether. Yeah, I didn't get very far in hard mode. So, it's not very foolish, huh? No. So as you can see, there are a couple doves up by Mono. And if you're f feeling particularly um, vindictive against feathered animals, you actually can shoot them. Let's, let's get riding first. Come on, move it, pony. Now, so... Our next location is off in this direction. First time we're heading this way. Ah, sorry, I've got a small cold. I've had it for a few days. Always sniveling. Or sniffing. Either way, not a very good habit to get on into because this microphone is really good and it picks it up very well. Heck, it even picks up the hum for my PlayStation 4 running this game. Let's see, um, things to talk about on the way there. Hmm. I'm honestly not too sure. It's, uh... I think I've pretty much run through all my talking points talking points by this point. Oh, I guess I could uh, reminisce a bit. I have honestly been enjoying liking this Let's Play a lot. Like, I know, I've, I know playing video games as a career isn't uh, exactly ideal, and if this became my only source of income, I would be doing horribly. But it's more about... Uh, you know, just having fun and enjoying what you do, not how uh, successful you can be while you're doing it, although both is good. Oh, I could have talked about that forest there. It was a lot worse in the PlayStation 2 and 3 versions. Uh, it was a bit more dense in those games, and Agro would try to run through it at a full sprint. In this version, though, she'll just trot along through it at a at a slower pace, so it's easier to steer her steer her through it. And they also added a path to follow, so it's no longer a nightmare to get to this Colossus. Another shrine up there. I haven't actually been trying to hunt for those, um, any of the collectibles. I probably should be doing that more. But at the same time, I don't really feel like it. We are not here to see a collectathon. If you did that, you'd probably be. Uh, going through a platformer game or a game with a lot of collectibles like Mario. Super Mario Odyssey, I mean. Um, I've actually been meaning to try that. Like, I know I'm not good at Mario games, but it seems like a fun one regardless. Anyway, we go into this underground temple here. This is going to be yet another encounter Aggro can't help us out with poor horse who gets left behind so often, but she is going to be integral for so many fights that it's not too, too bad. Sorry, just had to readjust there. Tried moving farther away from the TV, so hopefully, hopefully, 
uh, the hum from my system won't be as loud. And I'm not too sure why it keeps humming so loudly. Uh, I should probably try and mess around with the settings. Anyway, we're gonna jump down here. And say hello to Colossus number six as soon as, well, he's behind door number one. And I honestly feel kind of bad for him, because as you'll see, he was stooped over waiting in there. And if the entire room he was waiting in was the same height, then he had to stay stooped over until we got here. Anyway, this is Colossus number six. His official name is Barba, but I am going to call him Santa, because he has a nice glorious beard. Or maybe Ramu. Either way. Either way, this is the very first Colossus that makes me feel genuinely, and I mean genuinely, um, nervous while fighting him. Uh, we have to get to the other side of the room. And usually you can just jump right over those gates, but I'm feeling um, particularly nervous about fighting him. Like, he is... Uh, there's going to be a small cutscene that plays when he stomps through the gate. And I don't know if I can move during that cutscene, but I know for a fact that he can. Um, but my evil plan here is to lure him to that gate, so he'll stomp right through it. And then lure him around, so that way I can... Oh, there's a clear path. Okay. Yeah, he swung at me, and the shockwave from his fist hitting the ground was more than enough to nearly kill me. So, not fun. As you can see, just like Asterios, he is another Minotaur-themed Colossus. And let's reveal his weak spots, shall we? Looks like they added one onto his hand there. We got one on his head and uh, one on his back. Anyway, let's hide. Santa here, he is actually the Colossus for, uh, that you lure down by hiding in a place. The, a feature that was cut from the very first encounter with Asterios. So he's going to lean down, so we run out, and jump onto his very glorious beard. And from here, we should be able to easily get to all of his weak spots. While it plays this song again. And Super Butter Buns was kind of right. They pretty much use this song all the time. To be fair, they didn't coast, they didn't have too many tracks, but they make the most out of those tracks, and they are all glorious as far as I'm concerned. Repetitive, sure, and you can have too much of a good thing. But a good song is a good song, no matter how many times you listen to it. You're just gonna get tired of listening to it. Unlike Asterios, he is going to flail around a lot more. Oh, whoa, whoa, yeah, look at Ra look at Wander Ragdoll. Anyway, let's get stabbing at his back here. Appro apply acupressure liberally. And then we'll have to get to his left arm after he's done um, uh, doing the hokey pokey and turning himself about. Sorry, I thought I thought that one was down. Looks like we got a little bit more to go. There we go. I think he's gonna get us off here. 
very poor choice of phrasing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I thought I thought when your grip rage would run out, you would end up being flung. And now to figure out how to get to his left arm. He usually attacks by by hitting, trying to hit you with his right arm. So I'm not sure if we can bait him into attacking with it. So maybe we just have to drop down. Ah! Maybe we can get him to attack with it. Let's see. I don't think so, but it's going to be very tricky to actually get on there. Uh, maybe I should just cut this part out. Let's try just keeping to his left side. No, well, he just tried to step on us. Yeah, let's just lure him back here and get him to uh, lean his head down again. go. He puts his hand all the way down. I did not think he would do that. Alright. Just a few more pokes. I believe just one more. Uh, one, maybe two more. And he will be dead. And we will have successfully murdered Christmas. Alright, Santa is dead. Well, oh, sorry. <laughs> Maybe I should have called him Ramu. They. I gave Ramu a more beastly appearance on that Final Fantasy Explorers, so having a Minotaur-like body would have suited him. Just a bit, though. And I just realized I've been holding the controller close to the mic again. I hope it hasn't been picking up on the button presses. It did that last time, and I was super embarrassed. What time are we? Let's see, how much time have we taken up? Hmm, about 14 minutes? Uh, yeah, I think we should be able to take on the next Colossus. To a video seems to be like a good amount, and it means I can get this done in about... Uh, excuse me, about nine episodes? Eight, nine episodes, I think? Since episode one was just Asterios, I'm assuming that the last episode might just be the very last Colossus. Then again, I might need to start doing these as just individual episodes. Because each of the these Colossus fights is going to get a bit 
longer and tougher as we go on, obviously. Here we go, pretty pony. And the ride to this Colossus is going to be particularly long. Well, I've talked a little bit about um, The Last Guardian, the last game team I go made. I suppose I should try and talk up uh, the other game in their and their massive game library, uh, Ico. Although I should have actually researched before saying, sarcastic, saying that sarcastically. They could have a larger game library than I know. Yeah, there's Legos down there, by the way. Gives that lump of sand. But, um, Ico, I didn't actually finish Ico. I think I got about halfway through it. It's a pretty neat game. It sounds awful on paper, like, all, uh, like all their dick games do. Although I'm pretty sure I mentioned that. But Aiko is a puzzle platformer that you spend protecting a young girl who can't fight or well, do much of anything on her own. And the whole idea for that game was um, the director wanting to have a game where you just simply hold hands with another person. It's an entire escort mission, and it actually is a lot more tolerable than that ad that description would s make it seem like, because the escort in question, um, while she can't talk to you and she's not going to defend herself, or can't defend herself, uh, she isn't all that stupid. She, she um, if left alone, she'll help you solve the puzzles, so if you linger in an area too long, not knowing how to get forward, she'll offer a solution, usually by pointing at something. Initially, though, about Ico, one of my thoughts on it is it would have been a perfect example of a game that would have been so much better if they'd just removed all forms of combat from it, but uh, I learned a few new things about it, and the combat section seemed a bit more, or seem a bit more necessary now than what I remember them being. I don't remember if Ico has difficulty sliders that makes the enemies tougher or easier, but if it does, I would highly recommend going through that one on easy mode if you get it if you pick it up. Because fighting in that game is such a chore. The enemies have a lot of health and you you're limited to basic sword swings, meanwhile they get new and better tactics for not only taking you down, but also for taking down your escort E. Another one of those healing shrines. There's usually a silver lizard hanging around one of them. Um let's see. Since we're gonna be fighting another Colossus, I don't want to take the time to check. Uh, this video is probably going to take up a lot of time since this is, well, this is one of the bad colossi. I'm grateful that they did cut the number down, and that they, um, and that they tried to make everything as uh, good as possible. But they, a few of them still slipped through the cracks. And this bad boy here is probably the farthest away that any Colossus has been. Or will be. I don't know if any of the Colossus are actually a, even longer of a ride to get to than this one. Alright, and just jump off into the water. Alright, we're about to meet the Seventh Colossus. His uh, semi-official name is Hydrus, but I'm just gonna call him Catfish. Because he's got whiskers, and he's a fish. So, while none of the cut colossi were swimmers, um, one of them was supposed to be fought near water, and it's not just the phoenix that was on fire. Uh, the uh, one other one that the one that was supposed to be fought near water was called uh, Aberth. He was a giant spider. 
He probably got cut because the counter was too difficult and the way to climb it was to hit its legs. Hit, you hit it with its legs with your sword to knock it down using the regular attack. But they uh, cut it because it was, uh, in addition to being difficult, it had a one. It could uh, one-shot you very easily. And they didn't want to have just one Colossus where you use the auto attack. Or the regular sword swing. Alright, so that moaning sound, I believe that means Catfish is about to attack us. This guy is a very annoying and very boring encounter. Well, he does have more direct means of hurting us than Colossus size 1 through 5. That isn't really set much of a compliment for him. Uh, okay, there we go. Yeah, you just have to dodge his lightning attacks as he's coming to the surface, and then nab his tail uh, as it peeks above the surface. And then he will be very generous and let you hold on to him. Well, he'll be very generous and he'll keep close to the surface while you're holding on to him. And then you just have to alternate between running and holding on as you climb your way up. Of course, he it's a dangerous climb because the entire time those things are going to be active and every time they come up every time his um, back spikes go underwater, they emit electricity. All right, going to back off for a second here. But I think those little ridges right in front of each one, they indicate the length that the electricity can reach. But one stab, even on hard mode, is enough to take them out. Which is very good, because I probably would have been dead there if it didn't. Alright. So I miss that last stab, and he's diving back under. Yeah, he doesn't care that I grabbed his tail again, so we're just going to have to wait till he decides he wants to try and eat us again. I assume that's what he's going to do and going to be trying to do, because he's a jerk. You can see it on his smug prick face. As far as I can tell, this encounter isn't any different from the normal mode version. Uh, he probably he might have more health, or maybe he's doing more damage with the electricity. Or maybe I have to get closer to that last one, because I was so sure I was right on top of the weak spot to turn that last one off. But hopefully we'll have it uh, have him down with the next with the next go-around. It usually only takes two on normal mode. Yeah, this, this guy right here was actually one of the reasons why I did not want to try uh, continuing my time attack run-through. Because I did not want to have to picture fighting a colossi where you're so dependent on the AI behaving. Heck, even Santa might have been bad enough since you have to wait for him to lean over to jump on his glorious beard. Got it! Alright. Yeah. 
and then he's gonna flail his head in and out of the water. You just wanna time each stab, so that way you get it before, right before his head gets submerged. You won't always be able to, um, you won't always be able to get a full powered stab, so don't always go for that. One more ought to do it. Yes! Alright, that is the catfish all taken care of. Can't say I'm not relieved. He's easily one of the most boring to fight because of just how much waiting you have to do. And then the unfortunate downside I forgot to mention when we were fighting... Uh, the big bird, who I'm going to retroactively rename Empyria, um, is that when a Colossus is in the water and it dies, it takes those tendrils a lot longer to get to you than it, than it would if they had died on the surface. It's very, very annoying, and I'm kind of disappointed they didn't change that for this release. But, there we go. Thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you what you if you liked what you saw. And this is Space Oyster signing out.